and welcome everybody to our webinar on crowdfunding for cultural heritage, possibilities, aims, and examples. I'm Stefania Economou, I'm a political scientist working at web to learn and together with Katerina Zuru, the head of the company, and my dear colleague, Ioana Tsakarelu, we are very glad to host this uh, webinar that is part of the EU-funded Echoing project. So, Few words about the project. So, Echoing uh, aims to facilitate the recovery of cultural heritage through university driven open innovation actions. And the project is coordinated by the Norwegian University of Science and Technology and is designed to bring together academia, the cultural heritage sector, and society by leveraging the opportunities that are now offered by new technologies. So far, the project has completed, fully completed uh, two main project results. As you can see here, we have our six online modules on open innovation on six different topics produced by project partners. The modules are open access uh, available on the University of Tartu's e-learning uh, platform. On the other hand, we also have produced uh, as a project a uh, publication that aims to, that has identified opportunities and challenges of cooperation between universities and the cultural heritage sector. It's a publication that's also available, open access through an uh, echoing official website. In today's webinar, we have together with us Ioana Tsakarelu, a digital culture and museum specialist working at Web2Learn, and Katerina Zuru, a researcher on technology and haste learning and head of Web2Learn. As most of you have already seen, our uh, webinar focuses on crowdfunding. So we are going to present some key concepts, tools, and objectives, and we are going to delve deeper in the concept of citizens' engagement and citizens' role and contribution in making a wider impact uh, of crowdfunding campaigns. Important to say uh, that this is just an introductory webinar in a series of webinars and upcoming events, uh, all part of the Equine project. Uh, in the next uh, event, we are hosting uh, Jill Cousins, who will uh, provide an online workshop, deliver an online workshop, uh, talking about crowdfunding in practice. So that this workshop will be carried out on 19th of June. And then we foresee a one webinar in Greek language for small cultural heritage organizations, again on crowdfunding, while at the end of June, we will deliver a face-to-face -face workshop in Greek language for women's associations in the Cyclades. Now, before giving the floor over to my dear colleague, Ioana, we have a poll question for you participants. Um, feel free to answer. Uh, as you like. Thank you, Katerina, for launching the poll. So the first question is about your participation in crowdfunding campaign. Have you ever participated in a crowdfunding campaign so far? Yes or no? Just one choice. A few seconds for you to answer. Greetings from Estonia also and from Italy. Poland and Ukraine. Okay, I think we can close the poll. Oh, interesting to see. So majority of participants haven't participated in a crowdfunding campaign, but we also have an important percentage, 40% that all, uh, already have participated in a kind of crowdfunding campaign. Good to see. So with no further ado, I'll give the floor over to my dear colleague. I'll stop my screen sharing. Ioana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stefania, for this warm welcoming. I'm glad to be part of this uh, inspiring webinar. And today we will discuss uh, on different aspects of uh, crowdfunding applied uh, in cultural and creative sectors. So such an interesting topic. Uh, let me uh, share my screen. Okay.
now can anyone uh, see or not loading okay so uh, let me please uh, move on to the next So, yes, I just skipped one. I skipped fundraising, uh, which is the reason why we're here today. So, such a shame of me. Uh, so, today we're gonna talk about fundraising. Uh, it's a quite common term, but are we really familiar with the core content of this term or not? So, uh, let's give it a try. Fundraising is the seeking and gathering uh, voluntary uh, financial contributions by engaging uh, either individuals, governmental agencies, charitable foundations, or even businesses. So it's all about raising money, but how we do that. So moving on, it's time for a little categorization. There are many, many types of fund raising, but here we have collected the four major ones. We have donations, sponsorships, events. And when I'm talking about events, I'm talking about galas, uh, auctions, wackathons, or any type of atoms, let's say hikathon, uh, or concerts. And these events may work as an alternative venue. So we can close, we talk, we interact, we learn more about the organization, the project, and the ideas. So moving on, I let crowdfunding for the end because that's a key topic for today's webinar. And let's have a brief definition of crowdfunding. Again, it's about raising money to finance projects, but in a quite altered way. We also use online platforms, and I will talk about these ones later. But first, I really, really need to clarify this. We don't care just about crowdfunding in general, but apply it in the cultural and creative sector. And what do I mean by that? What's actually cultural and creative sector? What's included? As you can see on this specific slide, we've got performing arts, audiovisual and multimedia, design, arts and crafts, education and research on arts and culture, which is of vital importance, and of course, social cultural work, meaning cultural participation, and of course, social activism. So, moving on. Diversity of the cultural sector itself. The cultural sector is not characterized by homogeneity. We've got many discrepancies based on cultural differences, linguistic differences, structural ones, and of course, differences in terms of finance streams. And that's the most important parameter in our field of research. So, Enough with the diversity of the cultural sector. Now moving on to the diversity of crowdfunding models. How many are they? Okay, you can see in the slide there are four. So let's give uh, a brief description of each model. We've got donation-based, reward-based, lending and equity-based. So to begin with the donation one, we give a small amount of money in order to um, meet project's goal, but we do not expect anything in return. On the contrary, for the reward-based model, we do expect something in return, not something uh, with a financial value, no, but we do expect a reward that functions more or less like a strong motivation for the crowd in order to engage and contribute essentially. And then we've got lending and equity-based models. 
they're way too different from the two aforementioned ones. And why is that? Because they are more like investment models. We do uh, anticipate something in return, whether it's a financial compensation or a sir uh, at the business. So letting those models behind, let's see this emblematic example, a stitch in time held by Hand Museum. It's a very successful crowdfunding campaign, not only in terms of uh, amount raised, but also in terms of founders participated. As you can see, 137. So this is a very, very good example of crowdfunding campaign that will be showcased in our next webinar. So coming soon, stay tuned. And then we are ready to roll. We're ready to start our crowdfunding campaign, but of course, it's time for, let's say, a question or not. Maybe it could wait. For this slide, we will see the actors involved in the crowdfunding campaign. And what do I mean by that? We've got the transmitter. And the transmitter is the creator of the crowdfunding campaign, the one who generates ideas. And then we've got the receiver, the crowd and never, never underestimate the power of the crowd. And then we've got the matchmakers, meaning the online crowdfunding platforms. They can offer us both technology and services. Last but not least, the mediator, policy makers. They offer us the general framework of legislations. So, all about the process, all about the process of a crowdfunding campaign. There are some steps that need to be followed. But before that, I would like to set a poll. So are you ready, guys? We're ready. We are ready. Okay, yes. so let's roll. I can't wait to see your final answers. Very curious. So I'll give you a little more time. And while we were waiting, I can just mention briefly those steps that you can also read on our slide. There are five particular steps. We need to establish our core concept, meaning why do we want to succeed with this campaign? Identify our target group, meaning its identity and features, which are very, very important. In order to choose our crowdfunding platform, decide on the rewards. And if you guys remember, we just said that rewards stand as motivation for the crowd. And of course, we should choose social media platform. I don't know if we're ready to see the results of our poll. Oh, I don't know. I feel a bit happy because I also voted for the last one. So, you know, <laughs> I feel like the majority is with me. Um, so thank you for that. We're moving on. And now we will see the steps. Um, I don't know what happened. And it's not moving forward. I think we've got a technical issue. Yes. It's sharing for you, Joanna, if you want. Ah, it moves now. No, no, no. Great. Now everything is fine. It, I don't know. It maybe wants to sabotage me, but I won't let it. 
So let's follow the steps. We've got here our first three steps. We need to establish our concept, meaning our storytelling. We need to have a clear, strong story behind our campaign, because this is what's going to convince the crowd to engage and participate. And then, talking about the crowd, we have to identify our target group. What are the specific features of this target group? Of course, someone could argue that, OK, I want everyone to participate. Well, that's fine, but that's too general in order to design and implement a certain methodology. And then we've got step number three. We should choose crowdfunding platform. OK, there are many out there. And some of them may focus on certain sectors and some of them not. So again, let's see a few examples. We've got Sydney Spark, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, and GoFundMe. These are the most preferred, actually. And then we've got some screenshots of uh, these uh, online crowdfunding platforms. And as you can see in some of them, they're focused on arts or culture and creative sector in general, while some others not. So it is really important to focus on what we want, the sector we want to focus. Now, how are we going to choose our platform? We need to have some selection criteria. Here, we have selected the four major ones. Uh, of course, our platform needs to offer a plethora of crowdfunding models. We've already mentioned the four major ones, then recommended by others. And of course, what I'm saying again and again, focus on a specific sector. Last but not least, our crowdfunding platform needs to have already hosted many successful campaigns because this will convince us that we're not talking only about quantity, but also about quality in the process we want to run. And then we're moving on to step four and five. We should decide on rewards. And what do I mean by that? Since reward stands out as motivations, we really should pay attention on something not fancy or extravagant, but more meaningful and spiritual. We should pay attention uh, on the experience because this is what will lead the crowd to engage and contribute in a more essential way. And then we should choose our social media platform. Each social media platform consists of its own features and, of course, audience, as long as with goals. So we should be very, very careful. Now, if we're not careful and we would not follow uh, the methodology as it is, or if we probably miss a step, we will probably fail. OK, I know that this is not what we want, and I won't be pessimistic, but there's this scenario too. So why is that? Why we may fail? Because we have an unclear concept or because we didn't choose wisely our reward. Lack of trust in online payments. Okay, let's be honest. That's a quite common reason for almost anything that has some online processes of financing. Of course, insufficient promotion. It's all about marketing. It's all about spreading the news, spreading the message, spread our campaign storytelling in the most appropriate way based on our target group. And of course, lack of trust by founders. And why is that? Because crowdfunding as a financing practice is characterized by uh, a total loss of transparency. So this is something we should work on it. But if we do not fail and we pay attention and you listen to me carefully, we will gain all possible benefits of crowdfunding. And what's that? Acquiring new skills, mostly in terms of promotion, communication, how to use our social media channels properly in order to gain every possible benefit from them. And then reaching out to wider audience. Okay. We have already set our target group, but of course, we can add to this group even more. 
attracting new sponsor because one is never enough. And it's very important to keep in mind that we need to have also sustainability. So it's not only about right now, it's about to create long-term relationships in terms both of financing, engaging and contributing. And then we may attract also extra media attention. That's good, we want that. And of course, increase our civic engagement. This is a very, very, very important topic that my dear colleague Stefania will address later on. And I can't wait to listen to her. So, social networks and value. Before we do that, before we talk about that, I'm always saying again and again about social media channels. We may have another poll as well. Okay. I see smiley faces, so I take this as a yes. So, what would you consider as the most important benefit of crowdfunding? I'm waiting for your answers. Okay, so while we're waiting, actually, we could... We could maybe move forward to the slide and talk about the social networks. So it's about spreading a message, having a narrative, a digital one, that we want to spread in the most efficient way and also for free. Social media helps us downsize the budget because we have to keep in mind that crowdfunding campaigns are not for free. You should invest money, time, and effort, but mostly time and effort. And then, and then we've got a very uh, nice complex term, slacktivism. I don't know if everyone is familiar with this term. Okay, uh, it's a quite new one, let's say. It's a tendency to support uh, a social cause, a social action through social media but without having a meaningful contribution. And let's make it uh, more simple. I may see something on Instagram while I'm scrolling down like this every day, and I'm just uh, pressing the like, and I'm like, oh, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, but I do not contribute. I do not donate money, or I don't take part in activities that promote civic engagement. So, it's time to pose a question. Do I really participate and contribute to this project or idea just by sharing something on social media? No, but we should also keep in mind this slight advantage, advantage I'm sorry, that we have still engagement, digital one, but engagement. So I think uh, that we have the results ready. Okay. Okay, it's interesting. Okay, some of them are not voted at all. I didn't expect that, to be honest, but it's a nice surprise, a thought-provoking one. So thank you for that. Um, thank you for listening to me. Uh, I was a bit stressed, but together we had a very nice presentation and I think that I'm ready to share the stage with my dear colleague, Stefania. Thank you very much, Elena. I'm going to share again my screen. Before getting started, Iana, thank you for this very much insightful and engaging presentation you made. It was absolutely great to help us understand what crowdfunding really is. Now, so, dear participants, by now we have seen 
why crowdfunding can become beneficial as a way to acquire, to raise funds for your institution. At this stage, we are going to focus on a less explored dimension of crowdfunding, a dimension that is related with the social aspects of a crowdfunding campaign. In, in particular, we're going to see how and why it is important to approach a crowdfunding campaign as an opportunity to enhance social participation of citizens. Um, yeah, to be honest, there is an recurrent issues in crowdfunding campaigns so far. So the majority of, of campaigns are uh, characterized by two features that are not helping us uh, expand the civic engagement dimension. The first characteristic is that most crowdfunding campaigns are focusing on a are, um, are delivered as one of events. So citizens are called to participate on the crowdfunding campaign as long as it runs, as long as the goal, the objective of the campaign is achieved. And then thank you very much, no follow-up activities that will engage donors, that will engage citizens in further activities of the institution. Uh, and the second uh, problematic characteristic is that we usually approach crowdfunding as a financial activity, as a way to acquire funds and nothing else which is also not helping us seeing the social value of a crowdfunding initiative. So what is missing and what we would like to see in future crowdfunding campaigns in the cultural heritage sector? Although crowdfunding is a widespread uh, practice in cultural heritage, uh, by looking at the literature review, we have observed that very few initiatives are deploying civic engagement beyond the duration of the crowdfunding campaign, as I said earlier. Uh, what we believe is that there is huge potential in approaching uh, crowdfunding and exploring its uh, social dynamics that arise not only throughout the campaign itself, but that crowdfunding can be connected with further activities after the crowdfunding campaign is completed that would make citizens participants and real agents of, of change for your institution. So for, do, for doing this, we need methodologies and roadmaps that would share knowledge and spread experience about how we can further engage citizens in our institutions. Our approach to crowdfunding uh, is focusing on the social aspect of it. We see crowdfunding not only as a way to raise funds, but also as an opportunity for knowledge exchange and knowledge transfer between institutions and citizens, communities, private and public organizations. Uh, we also see crowdfunding as a process that can lead to knowledge valorization in the cultural heritage sector. And we finally approach crowdfunding as an empowering act that can have a wider impact to citizen communities involved in such actions. All these three uh, approaches, all these three ways we understand crowdfunding lead to enhancement of the following, uh, the following concepts. We want to uh, raise awareness about the active role of citizens in cultural heritage and how they can uh, be integra integral part of cultural heritage institutions' uh, efforts to open up to public and um, protect and preserve their, their exhibitions and, and, and their activities. We would like to uh, highlight the value of social participation, people not just being donors, not just giving and providing resources in a crowdfunding campaign, but being active and participating in all aspects of your institution's activities. We want to provide the social values dimension, uh, and we also make a point about social entrepreneurship because crowdfunding can become can act as a trigger for people, for citizens, to start thinking in terms of social entrepreneurship and how their engagement can bring further benefit to the wider community. So. As we have highlighted some barriers and gaps in literature, we are now moving on to next steps. Uh, we would like to explore and go, proceed to the design of a methodology that can integrate and expand 
civic engagement actions, of course, crowdfunding campaigns have in their nature a, a core of civic engagement uh, identity, but we argue here that we need to expand this already presence of civic engagement in crowdfunding and scaling it up to more empowering uh, um, actions and opportunities for citizens. We also would like to design a methodology and see a methodology that provides some impact assessment tools in order to evaluate and assess the social, cultural, and educational dimensions of a crowdfunding campaign, understanding the impact in society of a crowdfunding campaign. And from theory to practice and con some concrete examples of initiatives that expand civic engagement beyond the usual crowdfunding campaign, we are now going to provide some three very concrete examples, um, starting with uh, uh, an, an initiative in the Netherlands, in uh, Rotterdam, Luch Singel. Uh, it is an initiative that focuses on the um, building of a bridge in Notre Rotterdam city. What is special about this example? So here citizens were called to contribute in a crowdfunding campaign in order to build this first crowdfunding public infrastructure. So uh, why we think that civic engagement is more highlighted in these actions? Because not only citizens should have prior uh, understanding of why it is valuable for them to contribute in this campaign, but today, the bridge has been built, has been uh, constructed, and uh, is a structure that provides public spaces, uh, recreational spaces for citizens to, uh, to engage with their fellow uh, citizens and co-workers and families. So we see that uh, something has started as an initiative to collect funds to create just an infrastructure, just a public building, a public infrastructure, has now become a space for collective engagement, for uh, recreational activities that can be enjoyed by all citizens of Rotterdam. Second initiative, uh, the With You, We Do initiative uh, is uh, was taking place in, in Italy. Uh, it was initiated by a, a team, a, a telecommunications group, and aims to fund and reward uh, citizen-driven actions that enhance the digital culture, enhance protection of the environment, and social innovation. So here, again, we don't have just an attempt, an effort to provide some funding to people that have innovative ideas for a social purpose, but we also have a reward and donation based system that is more engaging for citizens and for people to participate in the long term in these actions. Uh, our last campaign and uh, last initiative uh, is about GoodPeo, that uh, is a platform uh, that uh, builds strong communities through crowdfunding. So, GoodPeo aims to enhance participative adoption of public policies and facilitate self-organization and citizen participation. And they call this type of funding cloud funding because they have private and public uh, institutions coming together to fund uh, and to invest in projects that rely on the support of civil society. And it's interesting to see how these projects are not just one-off events, they are long-term projects that aim to uh, to have a wider impact in the communities and in people's engage in those uh, campaigns. Summing up, so, so far we have outlined the main barriers that doesn't help us scaling up crowdfunding actions to become more engaging for citizens. As we said, uh, nowadays crowdfunding uh, our campaigns are more like one-off events that are completed once the crowdfunding goal objective has been achieved. There is a dominant focus on the financial side and financial benefits of crowdfunding. So ignoring or um, underestimating the social aspect of crowdfunding. And we have, of course, few examples of campaigns that go beyond uh, the funding itself. Uh, but uh, in our approach to crowdfunding, in our understanding, we would like to see a uh, uh, a new reality that enhances the social dynamics of a crowdfunding campaign, especially for cultural heritage institutions, 
culture is an integral part of a society, of a community. So we need this social aspect to be very much present in a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, crowdfunding should take full benefit of technological potential and innovations. And finally, it should be uh, approached as an opportunity to leverage active citizenship to advocate for more uh, socially just and inclusive societies. So not just setting up a crowdfunding campaign to achieve a very concrete and measurable goal, but also thinking of wider social impact of your campaign and how you could engage with citizens in the long term in a series of actions that, that can have crowdfunding as a starting point, not the last one. Just to uh, share with you, as Sianna already said, uh, our online workshop on 19th of June with Chill Cousins. We're very much honored to have Chill Cousins uh, introducing us to two successful crowdfunding campaigns he had organized with Hand Museum. Stay tuned, we were going to share all our uh, workshop materials in the coming days, the references for today's presentation. Thank you very much all for uh, following us and time for questions, open to questions. I think I will stop my screen sharing also at that point.